people who take part in the rising, who fight in the rising, are all known to the authorities. They're not secret members of a secret army, they're not wearing balaclavas. Uh, they've been parading up and down openly for two years. So the British knew a great deal in advance about the plans for the rebellion, but what they didn't have was, if you like, joined up thinking, especially in Dublin, as to what was likely to happen. What's amazing about the rising from a British point of view is first of all, it doesn't really create a crisis for the British. Irish soldiers at the front don't mutiny. Irish sailors in the, in the Navy continue to fight. Uh, nowhere are Britain's strategic interests harmed by the rising. And this is amazing when you consider that the rebellion has taken place within the United Kingdom. The rising is taken as the defining moment uh, for the birth of, of independent Ireland. Some people would say it should be January 1919 when the first Doyle Aaron, of which my great-grandfather was a member, actually met in Dublin. Because it, after all, had strong electoral legitimacy, which was something that the, the rebels in 1916 certainly didn't. The Easter Rising of 1916 changed the face of Irish history, but it also changed the face of world history. So when we look at 1916, we have to situate it in that global context and look at how it destabilised so many other countries across uh, the British Empire. Uh, just to give you an example, in India, uh, the Indian nationalists literally looked to Ireland for inspiration. Uh, there was a copycat rebellion in Chittagong, which was almost an exact replica of the Easter Rising uh, here in Dublin, to the point where they also issued a proclamation which was absolutely identical in sentiment and actually used the same language as the uh, Irish pro proclamation that Pierce, of course, had read uh, from the steps of the GPO to a rather bewildered audience. I think the proclamation is Ireland's Declaration of Independence. It's one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, document in Irish history. It's a triumph of inspiration. It's something that has been hugely misunderstood and misinterpreted over the past 100 years. But there is so much in it that still resonates and that still has relevance for Ireland. I think what's interesting about 1916 and this centenary year is that it's not just focusing on the leaders like it maybe was commemorated in the past. It's not being a triumphalist celebration that there is much more criticism and, and reflection on things like the proclamation, on the events, and a lot more of a focus on the regular men and women who were involved in the Rising, because for too long the women were written out of the story of the 1916 Rising. So I think we get an awful lot more about uh, the civilian casualties, we get an awful lot more about the heroism and idealism of the men and women who fought in 1916. Thank you.